Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well, and welcome to another bike review here on the channel. And uh, it's a much anticipated bike for me, this, because today I'm riding another bike from Royal Enfield. This is the 2022 Classic 350. Now, uh, the reason why I've been looking forward to riding this is because uh, I rode the original Classic, well, not the original Classic, but the Classic 500 a couple of years back, and I really enjoyed the character of that bike, the looks of the bike, it was amazing, although it did ride, it has to be said, somewhat agriculturally. Uh, but that was a bike that I really, really liked. However, when I learnt that uh, Royal Enfield were going to be bringing out this bike with the Meteor engine in it, an engine which I absolutely loved when I rode the Meteor recently, then I thought this could be absolutely the sweet spot. A really nice, smooth, single thumper engine in a classically styled bike. Anyway, I've got to ride it for the next few days. Stick around, stay tuned. This is my first ride review. I'll tell you what I think of it. All right, so uh, welcome to the environs of Great Missenden, where you join me on this rather grungy March day. But uh, rather than wait until the weather was perfect to do this review, I just couldn't wait to get out on the bike, to be honest. And even though I've only been riding it a few minutes, it doesn't disappoint. This engine is just absolutely cracking on here. It's got a great sound. It's completely unintimidating, this bike. It's not got loads of power. I'll go through the spec later in the usual way. But for the sort of riding that I like doing, which is around the lanes on a summer's afternoon, not quite summer yet, this is just perfect. Anyway, before I get too carried away about what the bike's like to ride, let me uh, jump off the bike and show you around it, show you what it looks like. All right, so let's take a look at this little beauty, shall we, and uh, just show you some of the little design features of the bike. Now, first off, let me say, this particular bike is the Royal Enfield press machine. And uh, as is often the case um, when um, PR companies and stuff send you these bikes, they laden them with accessories. So this has got some stuff bolted onto it that are non-standard. So I'll point those out as I go along uh, as well as I can. But overall, what a beautiful looking bike. I mean, this one is in halcyon black and they come in all sorts of colors, these, which I'll talk about when we go through the specs. But I think this one looks really beautiful. That exhaust, lovely lines on it, sort of a pea shooter type exhaust, looks really top quality, as does the whole bike, completely belying its price point of less than four and a half grand for one of these. Uh, I mean, if you look at it, some of the welds may be a little bit tricky i mean not too bad that one i mean i notice there's one down here that looks a bit like sort of pigeon poo um but these ones here look absolutely fine generally speaking the build quality is amazing on this bike um stuff like the mud guards proper proper metal mud guards i mean look at these hefty looking forks on here the thing looks properly well made i love this um light binnacle on here it looks properly retro this very similar to the old classic 500 uh, and these little lights up here as well look great um, this has got uh, halogen headlights i think these are led but otherwise it's, it's halogen all around massive sturdy uh, levers on it as well the switch gear on here again looks sort of super retro uh, very similar to what's on the meteor but i think it looks great and it's very easy the way it works is tactile you can feel it's you know it's operating properly uh, love this nothing difficult about this nothing no complicated unnecessary electronics the instrument binnacle itself is beautiful uh, i mean it looks classic again you've got girodos and stuff in the led bit down below uh, and then this little space here i think is for the tripper you know the little nav device i don't know why it's not on this bike so talk about those non-standard things these are non-standard mirrors on here these are accessory ones that you can buy. Can't remember what they call them, but I bought these once for my Interceptor. They're nice mirrors, actually, but the standard ones would be fine. This I hate, this uh, windscreen. I think it looks absolutely awful. Uh, I mean, it does do a pretty good job of keeping the wind off you, but I really don't like the looks of that. So if this was my bike, that would go. I wouldn't do that. Another thing that I don't like about this bike is the rear seat. They come with a rear seat, rear seat as standard, uh, and this is removable. And the bike, I have to say, looks so much better, I think, without the rear seat. Uh, and this one also has this additional rack on, which again, I think is, a, is an optional extra. Quite handy, to, you know, if you are carrying stuff, I guess, but, uh, but not for me, so that would all come off. I can't show you it without it, because to take the seat off, you actually have to undo these um, nuts here on the top of the suspension struts, uh, and then the whole thing lifts off. And as this is a press bike I've only got for a few days, I don't intend taking it to, apart. But if it was my bike, that would come off, the screen would come off, and then I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Some lovely chrome accents. Oh, another thing on here, these, I don't think these are standard foot pegs. These are like foot boards, which again are optional. It comes with normal pegs. I wouldn't bother with those either, I don't think. But uh, yeah, 
overall i think a lovely lovely looking bike they've absolutely hit the mark with this it looks straight out of the sort of 1940s and the paint schemes and stuff are beautiful on here this this raised lettering on the tank just looks and feels really premium uh, they've done a lovely job on this with some great uh, uh, color schemes as well so uh, yeah nice work royal enfield on the looks of this bike you've done a top job i think okay so welcome back aboard the mighty 350 the classic 350 brilliant bike and so much for how it looks but how does the thing ride well let's start off in the usual way with comfort and that is top notch on this the seat feels really nicely padded comfortable place to be loads of padding in there and the riding position itself I'm sat bolt upright nice wide handlebars a little bit of an acute angle in my leg but nothing too uh, extreme certainly wouldn't describe it as sporty in the least it reminds me of the same riding position as you get on something like a Triumph Bonneville say all day comfortable this so no problems with the comfort link to that course suspension what's that like well this is a particularly bumpy road this one as they all are around here and the suspension suspension <laughs> does feel actually okay quite soft but again perfect for the sort of riding that I do again not you couldn't describe it as sport of course it's not that sort of bike but for cruising around the back lanes the suspension is lovely on here oh first white van of the day excellent actually that's not strictly true this bike was delivered to me from a white van so I can't really complain right let's see how she goes on this slightly fast road full throttle now in second the bike has a top speed I think quote is 72 miles an hour there we go we're up to 60 now uh, and it feels like it's got more to give but I'm not interested in doing more than 60 on a 60 mile per hour road so it gets up to 60 nice and quickly I suspect if you're going to ride on dual carriageways and motorways on a regular basis you would lack a bit of oomph but again for this sort of riding absolutely perfect nothing behind me I'm just going to try the brakes yeah front brake seems fine not too grabby Quite a nice bit of feel actually you have to give it quite an oomph let's give it another yep it works very well it's got twin discs on here as i say i'll talk you through the spec in a minute and show you those but they're fine let's try the back brake back brake is just as good as any other on any other bike i've ever tried they're never that brilliant are they but uh, it does the job of stabilizing the bike in the corners at least so the brakes are good what about the stuff i'm looking at here well again this is where the retro theme continues I really like the layout here. What I don't like, as I've already mentioned, is this screen. I mean, it's doing, to be fair, it's doing a pretty good job of keeping the the wind off me. But if I had one of these, I definitely wouldn't have the screen. But I do like the way they've done the instrumentation on this. The single instrument binnacle, it's easy, easy to read while you're riding along. It's got everything you need, including a proper fuel gauge and nothing else besides doesn't appear to have a gear position indicator but that's no big deal as far as I'm concerned but it's not complicated by lots of unnecessary electronics that's what I like about it and the switch gear itself works really nicely as I've already said I quite like the looks of this sort of retro style switch gear nothing quite like this I've seen on any other bikes these sort of rotary start switch here on the right the, the red one and then the uh, light switch on the left here being of a rotary design again but they feel quality, they're easy to use. Oh, one of my friends are cyclists. Nice and positive as you use them, they don't feel cheap and trumpery as you might think on a bike costing just 4,000, well less than 4,300 this particular one. Talk more about that later. In fact, let's not do that, let's jump back off the bike. Let me uh, talk you through the specs of this bike see what we're dealing with in terms of the numbers all right let's talk specs then on the classic 350 shall we and as usual i've written down so i don't get anything wrong which i am prone to do right let's start off with then the uh, the engine uh, what i think is partly the main event of this bike this uh, single cylinder uh, engine on here 349 cc uh, same as the meter as i say air and oil cooled so it hasn't got any uh, sort of ugly radiatorage at the front it just looks like a, again a proper retro engine to me so smooth they've done some clever stuff with counterbalancing shafts and stuff i still maintain this is the best single uh, cylinder engine 
engine I've yet ridden with. Uh, puts out 20.2 brake horsepower, so they're not going to win any prizes for speed at 6,100 RPM and uh, 27 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. So nice and low. So it's all you know low down in the rev range where you need it for pottering around these back lanes. It's absolutely lovely for that. Uh, let's have a look at the brakes on the front. It's got a single disc on here, as you can see, and a Bybray um, caliper, which is obviously Brembo's sort of um, budget end, if you like, or value brand. Uh, the front uh, disc here is 300 millimeters, and you can see uh, that it's got an ABS ring on there as well. Uh, and on the rear, we've got a single uh, pot caliper again, looks like it's Bybray, uh, and the disc on here is 270 millimeters. Seat height on here, 765 millimeters, so lovely low seat height, no problem getting your feet on the ground, and this lovely comfortable seat that uh, is nice and slim at the waist so uh, completely non-intimidating i'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg so relatively short fella and i'm absolutely flat footing it with a bend in my leg i think you'll be if you're sort of five foot four you'll be all right on this bike i think it's uh, it's great the seat height makes it very manageable um the weight of the bike 191 kilograms with 90 percent fuel so not only is it uh, nice and low to manage it's also nice and low in terms of weight to manage as well uh, the fuel tank on here, 15 litre capacity, which isn't bad actually, and I'm expecting very frugal motoring on this, it being a single cylinder. I imagine you'll get well over 200 miles out of a tank on that, so uh, so excellent. Um, electronics I normally talk about at this point in these uh, specification reviews, but in this case it doesn't really have any. I think it's got an LED rear light, uh, and that is about it. You can get those little trippers, as I say, that fits uh, up on the uh, instrument binnacle here. Um, but otherwise, other than the ABS, there isn't really any electronics to speak about. And the bike is all the better for it, if you ask me. Price-wise, this particular one uh, comes in at 4279. This is the Halcyon Black. I think my favourite colour is the both the Halcyon Green and they also do a chrome one. Uh, I rather like the uh, bronze chrome the chrome bronze one as well. They look absolutely stunning. The, bron the chrome ones are 4439, so 200 quid extra if you want the chrome ones. But still less than £4,500, which just makes this such an incredibly good value motorcycle i have to say if i had the room i'd have one of these in a heartbeat it's uh, an absolutely beautiful bike to look at and to ride anyway there we go that's the spec let's jump back on her so welcome back aboard the bike i'm still behind the white van but but no problem i'm not in any hurry on this bike the uh, gearbox on here seems nice and positive i think it's only got five gears if i'm counting correctly but that doesn't matter again on a, on a bike with this sort of power for this sort of riding five gears is enough but the gearbox is lovely and smooth, again, much belying the price point of this bike. It feels like something out of a much more expensive machine. The clutch on here, not too heavy, not super light either. It's not light like one of the assisted ones you get on the trunk, but it's not really heavy either, like you get, say, on my Panigale. That's the heaviest clutch I know. But they've got uh, these massive levers here, both sides, proper big hewn from metal. Feel nice and solid, and again, nothing about it feels low quality. So yeah, clutch and dirt uh, gearbox no problems there in fact on this first ride i can find nothing about the bike that i don't like other than these accessories that i've already talked about i'll give those a miss and just stick with a standard bike and lose the rear seat but other than that it's all set up you don't need to do anything oh hello road ahead closed let's go this way then So this bike obviously is the press bike from Royal Enfield. It's in great demands. I haven't got it for that long. I've only got it for a week. So I won't be able to bring you my normal in-depth review. Maybe uh, later on in the year I'll bring you, I'll, I'll borrow it for longer and bring you an in-depth review. But I will try and bring you another video if I can about the sort of lessons I've learned on the bike. Once I've ridden it a few more times, a bit longer journeys, that sort of thing. Let's see if I can find anything about the bike that I don't like. And I'll bring you that video. But after this, uh, this first ride, really is nothing about this bike not to like it's uh, the engine sounds epic it's got a great thumpy note to it but it's not so loud that it's obnoxious or anything like that but you know you're on a motorbike it's that lovely smooth engine with this uh, counter shaft or whatever wizardry Royal Enfield has done that means that actually it's not super super thumpy you don't feel like you're riding a thank you sir you don't feel like you're riding a pneumatic drill or anything like that but you do know you're on a bike I love this engine I have to say plenty of torque low down on it I know it's only a 350 and only that 20 point something brake horsepower but you really don't need more if you're just poodling around the lanes so for me this bike would be ideal 
If you lived in a town and you wanted a bit of a commuter and you were doing short distances in town, it would be brilliant. It's lightweight nature would be great to get you through the traffic and get you to work in comfort, in style and cheaply. Or if you fancied maybe a second motorcycle uh, and you just want something to cruise around the lanes on a Sunday afternoon, this would be perfect. And indeed, if you want your first big bike, you know, if you've just learnt to ride or something, and you don't want to move straight onto something massive and powerful, then this would be a great bike to learn your craft on as well, because it's completely non-intimidating, as I say. Second van of the day, Mercedes this time. Let's use this opportunity to overtake him. Now look at the lights. so many roadworks at the moment everywhere, it's just crazy. So yeah, this bike is uh, based on this first ride, everything I was hoping for and expected of it. Comfortable, fun, looks good, amazing pricing. I just think Royal Enfield are onto an absolute winner with this in the same way as they were with the Interceptor that just appealed to that same sort of thing. With those 650 twins, of course, they've got a bit more go. This one definitely runs out of puff once you wind her up. So if you are more into speed, then go for the 650 twins. But if you just want to enjoy your motorcycle riding, then this is the one to go for. I absolutely love it, and I expect these will be flying off the shelves for Royal Enfield. Well done them. I can't wait to see what else they come out with. All right, so that's it for my uh, first ride of you here on the Classic 350. Hope you enjoyed that. Do hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that sort of game if you're into social media. I use uh, Instagram most. I think I'm called the Missenden Flyer on that. Oh, no, it's just Missenden Flyer, sorry. The Missenden Flyer is an imposter one. Uh, and Facebook is the other one I, I use probably more. So check me out there if you're that way inclined. I tend to post things pretty much most days on those with what I'm up to so you get a feel of what's coming up on the channel thank you as ever for watching and uh, I look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the Mr and Flyer cheerio Ah, still here. Uh, I wasn't going to do a little fashion segment on this video, but uh, whenever I don't do them, people say, where's the fashion segment? So uh, if you're interested in the kit that I was wearing during this review, then stick around for the next minute or so and I'll tell you what I was wearing. First off, my gloves. These are from a company called Segura, which I think might be Spanish. I'm not too sure. Um, and these are their kind of retro inspired gloves. I'll put the name of them. I'm completely unprepared for this fashion segment, as you've noticed. I'll put the name of these and the price on the screen. And I'll put links below to bikerheads.co.uk, one of my channel sponsors. They're the distributors of these uh, Je uh, jeans of these uh, gloves and if you look at their website they'll show you where you can go and buy some let's get out of the way of this car don't want to be killed by the postman coming through um, and uh, also uh, I'll put a link to sports bike shop as well if you want to just buy online then that's where I recommend uh, you go and full disclosure sports bike shop that's an affiliate link if you click on that and subsequently buy something um, I get a little bit of a kickback to the channel so you'll be helping me out at no extra cost to you and uh, I don't just say that because it's an affiliate link but I actually find sports bike shop really good service really good pricing so check those out as well link to the gloves below uh, next up this jacket I'm wearing this is the jacket again it's from Segura same company and again if you look at that bike heads link below uh, you can find out where you can get one of these and again I'll put links to sports bike shop as well for this jacket uh, the price I'll put on the screen now uh, and as well the name did I mention that this is kind of a retro style jacket it's um I've talked about it before it is actually waterproof and one of the great things about it is that it comes with a, a separate shirt as a sort of a thermal liner so this red shirt arrangement I've got on underneath here see that is actually a separate liner that you can wear independently as a shirt um, but it comes with a jacket so I absolutely love that in the summer I should be able to um, just wear that as well uh, what else to tell you all well, my jeans you've seen these before these are from PMJ uh, these are those clever triple layer um, AAA rated jeans as well uh, they're quite expensive but they are they look good both on and off the bike and they're very protective and then last but not least uh, my boots here again my retro style boots these are again I'll put the name on the screen and links below to those as well I've had these now for probably six to eight months I'll wear these on and off the bike and I just think they look really good so there we go that's uh, that's the kit I was wearing hope that was of uh, some use to you